I'm gonna be using this, this fine shredder. I almost sold it recently, but I'm really excited about giving it good use and actually making the, the chicken feed powder. Forget about sustainability. You want to enrich ecosystems. Every bean is equipped to leave a positive energetic balance. Keep it pruned. We are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. Yo, what's up, Agroforestry Academy? Welcome back to another video. We're back here in situ the jazz. This is a plot where I've brought the chickens up from the pastures. We've had uh, three months no rain and we're actually halfway through the drought. You know, we kind of like that drought that it goes four months no rain and that's, you know, we can bear with that. We're gonna have to bear with this, but it's already, you know, May didn't rain. So it was like an extra month early and uh, you know, we can expect you know, another three months of drought. I won't say three months where it won't rain at all, but you know, three months still in that kind of drought information around here. So we're halfway through now. And uh, the pastures, they, they're gonna need their rest at the moment. Uh, you know, the chickens are down there in the poly farming system. They, you know, I haven't got them very well trained on the electric shocks, but still we've fenced off quite a few pastures and they've been, you know, rotating, but right now, it's you know it's got its toes in in we're well into the drought because up till now we're kind of like you know coming off the rain season the drought's begun but you know we're still seeing benefits we still got all that chop and drop material and things we chopped and dropped stuff in the beginning of the drought and it hasn't rained since but you know because there's still that humidity information because of that information of that mulching there's still humidity in the soil so we've got a, a lot of nice re-sprouts and that's the whole point of preparing for the drought just in time so that you do it and then you can still get some re-sprouts from that last humidity and you know shade off because you get in a little bit of a like a, a, a dilemma right when you're going into the drought do i chop everything down and you know cover the soil and look after the soil so you don't leave the soil bare for the drought but then if you do that as well you open a lot of light in and then you know low layer plants you know understory plants you know they suffer because a lot of sun coming in a lot of heat and a lot of drought so you want to keep things shaded you want to keep your soil covered so you need to find that balance and it's all about the timing i'm thinking you know if you do it at the right time you're able to bring that mulch down and get some re-sprout in time for when the drought really takes its toll you've already built up a little bit of shade for those plants so the timing of things is essential so what we've done we've bought uh the chickens up this is one of the pastures that we're bringing them up to i won't really call it a pasture i'll call it a plot uh this was you know some of our older plots 2011 2012 i've done these two different plots uh you know real learning curve things you know weren't systematic as how we plant today so there is a legacy here there's now some mango trees there's some uh, guanabanas a lot of citrus and the coffees basically so this is the start of the show in this plot is the coffees the, the plot is definitely going to suffer from having concentrated chickens in here and not being on a rotational system we've got two of these which we kind of rotate backwards and forwards but it is in the height of the drought so it is a plot that we've sacrificed for the chickens but it is a forestry plot it has lots of resilience obviously we've done the whole shabam here back in the day with the vegetable and that uh well the great news is we've got all the legacy from those eucalyptus bringing down a lot of organic matter and being able to feed the system covering the soil uh hopefully enough for that so that the chickens don't uh you know uh so we can minimize the damage basically uh, so it is a plot of sacrifice but you know it is definitely a beloved plot because of what's happened in the past because of the legacy that we have now some fruit trees and also because it's like you know home to these chickens and it's, it's it's a real nice home for them where they you know real in good comfort zone with shades and trees they can climb up and and stuff on the soil and things like that um so still beloved and uh and treasured <laughs> so what we've done now you know we really had to bring down because i was fixing the fence around you know really keeping it up to scratch for dogs and foxes and nighttime predators so we're fixing the fences around and these eucalyptus they were you know 12 meters 15 meters up to so 
So there's some real high trees building up here and because we've got the home my home over there and also we've got uh some you know like the, like a little power station where i control my irrigation and some piping going on so i can't let these eucalyptus become monsters to the point where I, you know if i want to bring this eucalyptus down one day you know my house is under danger or anything like that so so we took the opportunity to bring it down if we'd done it any later would have been destroying um fences that we, we 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 wanted to fix you know and it was just the way these eucalyptus were so large that i wasn't really with the time frame i had up for you know going up and pruning canopies and i just brought them down quickly with a chainsaw lots going on already we spent about 10 days working on this fence and and uh organizing the material from these eucalyptus so 10 days two guys is a lot of labor for us so you know we were just bringing things down chainsaw right down as well because with the citrus with the mango trees the guanabanas that are going on here they were starting to get shaded out by the eucalyptus so i, I believe that you know it's good timing time to go these eucalyptus some of them haven't been pruned since what maybe 2015 you know so there were big boys already around here some of them we brought them down some beautiful straight planks you know we're taking some edges and we got a load of like seven meter long you know 35 wide 30 centimeter wide uh trunks so we've got them everywhere and, ho and we, we hopefully we will make good use of that uh, with some construction down by the valley and uh so basically these chickens they're, they're up here we've managed to cover the soil with organic matter a lot of little cayennes as well uh you know and it's great because we we're bringing these little cayennes down and as we're doing the work of fixing the fence you know the fence was down I've got some horses are out loose and ponies and we've got uh, you know a few calves you know baby cows and that that were just work you know we're working and they're all around us eating that little cayenne and they just made a big feast like midway through the drought little cayenne's on the grounds big feast so they had about a week worth of feasting that while we're fixing the fence and that was great um, gave them a little top up on that on that green and uh another breakthrough as well with our chicken feed you know some since we're going off the pastures we've had to uh, really focus on intensifying you know the green information on the chicken feed that we we mix because obviously they're in pastures and we're always giving them a percentage of uh mexican sunflowers and and uh mainly guandu beans the pigeon peas but now we've really intensified that system and we're making the powder which is for me it's a breakthrough personally where we're sun drying the pigeon peas the mexican sunflowers and the karuru i'm gonna look at that karuru in english that yeah real nice calcium really made a big difference in the eggs and the eggshell and that when i introduced it so we're actually sun drying this stuff we're putting it through a shredder and then we're drying it further and going through another fine shredder where we're powdering it's got a little sieve on it where we only little particles go through so it's becoming we're making the powder you know the the green powder basically the the, the organic mexican sunflower pigeon peas and the karuru and it's just been fantastic uh i've actually what have i done with this i've cut down two-thirds of my conventional feed and I've replaced that with the uh, with the green feed, and the results have been great. So we've cut down 60% of the feed, and we've only lost out on 30% of the egg production. Okay, so for me, it's real positive results considering the price of that conventional feed. Okay, so we actually haven't dropped proportionally of the feed that we've cut down on. So for me, I've got a higher profit. So I'm really up in the money. I was really kind of breaking even with more conventional feed. And as we've cut down the conventional feed, you know, we've only lost, we've cut down two thirds and we've only lost a third of production. So for me, very positive results. I'm very excited, looking forward to the future. Uh, you know, I was already, you know, making some moves with, with some of these chickens going into the drought and looking, you know, at conventional feed prices, you know, all the politics, you know, crazy stuff going on with prices out here so we're quite excited now you know with the breakthrough of this powder uh, one tip that I can 
uh, share with you guys you know when we cut down the Mexican sunflowers and we let them dry in the sun and we turn them over and we let them dry again and then on a two-day thing right we can bring them in in the evening so it doesn't get that uh, humidity from the night time we still find that the main stalk even though the 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 very small bushes that we're cutting you know meter to meter high it's not how high it is it's how young it is it can even be higher as long as it's all nice fresh and green but just new fresh green sprouts obviously this time of the year they're like a meter high in rainy season you could have like you know a meter and a half two meter high freshly green sprout you know 30 40 days old stuff so but still there's a stalk in it and that doesn't dehydrate because if you want to make the fine powder this machine only takes dry material to make that powder so how I found is that you know we, we give it that one and a half day dry in the sun full plant but then we shred that you know into like centimeter particles and then further dry that so then we can open that up and let that humidity from the from the stalks dry further uh, in order for that to go through the sieve on this fine shredder right uh, it's just it's just been great um, I thought I wasn't going to be using this this fine shredder. I almost sold it recently, but I'm really excited about giving it good use and actually making the the chicken feed powder. Let's just have a quick look at it right there. Look. Everyone's really on the big chill. Look at that rooster there, born and bred here. Nice. They're chilling. The chickens all chilling when I was first out here with the camera. They kind of, you know, left me to it. But slowly they've got closer to us. And so, yeah, so, you know, we've got the, the double canopy coffee. We obviously destroyed quite a few uh, coffee plants as we brought down all these eucalyptuses. But uh, I'm quite hyped about the double canopy because you see where, where some of them got broken off. We had to give it a clean cut. We still got, you know, a backup at the bottom and things like that. So others that might have broken off we already got the backup right there and look at how much organic matter for real we got out of these trees you know for real i mean it's it's quite a thick layer we're talking about you know in the tree rows in the coffee rows which we we gave it as a priority it's for real like a good 30 centimeters it's not so ed this looks like it's ed material here but it's for real a full 30 centimeters worth of mulch around these coffees so that gives me some belief that um, the chickens, you know, are probably not going to get rid of all of this mulch. And uh, another really cool information is that from when, from when we first pruned this and put this organic matter in the fall, we're starting to see little green shoots in these coffee plants, like fresh new sprouts. And that only happens really when the rain comes through and then all the new fresh green sprouts. But just from covering the soil, you know, enough, it's given that stimulation, that humidity stimulation. After three months, no rain, it's been enough to give it the stimulation of humidity down there and new sprouts, you know, new shoots. So that was really cool really really cool it was really chuffed i only noticed this yesterday because it's now been you know about 10 days since we've got this organic matter down and and the plants are responding so yeah so i'm really excited about this here we've got about 150 chickens only in this plot here this plot is is, is it's not 2000 meter square so it's not that large and uh Let's let you know, like I said, a nice sacrifice, but check out some of these woods, man. The stuff starts here and goes all the way along. You know, got some real great ones. Got some real great ones. We have to obviously uh, cut some of them. We used this wood here to, to make the fencing around, so we used all in house wood to make the fencing on the spot. There's some real cool stuff here, and, and I'm Soon going to be releasing a video. I'm starting to work this wood. We've got some woodworking equipment. And we're going to be sharing that with you guys soon. So it's really great. We'll be harvesting wood in the house now. All right. So from the Agroforest Academy crew, you know, why don't you just make my day and make that button gray. Subscribe to our channel, man. We're on the road to 5,000 subscribers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's going to be a mark for us. Um, you know, it doesn't seem like that much when you compare it to a lot of channels, but 5,000 subscribers for us 
because we like we appreciate the quality of our subscribers people are really keen we know how many people has actually gone out there and planted because of our channel so it might not be high numbers but we know it's quality numbers and you know hit the like button as well so that more people can you know be suggested to watch this kind of content so from now from the agroforestry academy crew situ the jazz chicken plot in the house till next time